Hey guys, it's Lauren J. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. I like to do get ready with me style videos using products that are new, new to me or just need a little bit more love in my collection. And today I'm going to use products that need a little bit more love in my collection. I'm going to be using some favorites that I've had over the past couple of years and I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, what I'm thinking about, you know, purchasing for the new year. I've been watching a lot of videos. Inevitably, everyone has their changes to my channel video. I don't really have any changes planned to my channel. I just have changes in where I'm going to focus my makeup purchasing. Um, but it could always change. I mean, <laughs> so I'm just going to go through and use some of my favorite products and talk a little bit about what I'm thinking about purchasing and what I feel like I don't really need at this point. So if you're into that, keep watching. As per usual, I have done my brows. I've done my face primer. I use the Clarence Flash Balm and I've used um, eye primer, which today is the Sigma eye primer. Still not my favorite, a little bit drier than I want it to be, but um, it, I think it works. Um, it's very brightening though. So let's see, we're just going to go into eyes first and we're going to do a two shadow look basically. And I'm going to go in with my Fets Noirs uh, by Rado eyeshadow palette. And I'm going to use this center shade right here with the, it's like a silver with gold in it. And I'm going to go in with a Sigma E45. So I've got some notes down here about just things I want to remember to talk about. <laughs> Um, so as far as new products and new brands that I want to try, um, I'm like everybody else, I get influenced by what I watch and, um, and for a long time that was a lot of, um, smaller and smaller YouTubers, indie brands, smaller brands. Um, and I still do love those things. I still do watch that content and I still do look at those palettes and go, oh, that's super pretty. Um, but after a while I did kind of get eyeshadow palleted out. Um, I feel like I have so many um, affordable palettes, so many indie palettes, and they're just not usable for me on a daily basis where I am in my life right now. Um, you know, you, I certainly still do have my days like today where, <laughs> you know, I can do a really bold shadow look and go out with that and be totally fine. Um, but I find those days are a little bit less and less, um, now, and I've just kind of settled into more of a, uh, more quieter routine um a little bit i mean maybe not less makeup just a little bit toned down makeup and just on my day to day and i think a lot of that is just due to my age and having tried so many brands and so many formulas and this that and the other at this point and seeing what i think looks good on me and that is different for every person and your preferences are your preferences and i'm not saying that if you love bold shadow that's a bad thing. I think it, in some cases for me it's a good thing. In some cases for me it's just not the right thing that I'm feeling that day. Like I was saying, I do get very influenced by what I watch and what I've been watching since at least the pandemic has been a lot of more lifestyle content, a lot of more luxury brand content, and a lot of that is just um, because it's very vlog style and it's very calming and soothing to watch. So I, I started watching a lot of Michelle Wong She's actually switching to doing more long form vlogs on her channel this year, which I think is awesome. Those are the videos that brought me to her channel, really. And then sort of the luxury makeup kind of came along with that. Um, but yeah, uh, just people like Charlotte Holcroft, Hey, It's Jacqueline, um, Angela Van Rose, and um, uh, Allison Chase. Just a lot of different people, um, Alicia Archer, just a lot of different content from what I have normally been consuming and a lot of them are making changes to their channel too which doesn't surprise me I think if you've been doing this for a long time 
you just like any human being, you get tired of doing the same thing over and over again. And so I don't blame them for making those changes. Um, but watching those types of videos, those tons of lifestyle, luxury, just very calming videos to me, at least during the pandemic, it just made everything feel a little bit more normal. Um, very influenced by that. And of course I've started wearing more Chanel and I've started wearing a little bit more higher end brands. Not that I think those things are necessarily better. I still love drugstore. I love the Physicians Formula bronzer. I'll be using one today. Um, I still love Elf. I still love a lot of things. Um, but just kind of focusing my purchasing more on those things because I have not done them for so long. And there's a lot of new brands to me. So brands like I really want to try Victoria Beckham, which if you told me that five years ago, that's not me at all. Um, I should keep doing my makeup. So I'm using the Lorac Fairy Tale Forest palette. My favorite shade, Pine. I've got such a dip in there. I'm really hoping to hit pan at some point. And if I do, the nice thing is, is that I can, if I hit pan and I use this up, I could pop it out and throw one of my Viseart shadows in here because those are small enough to fit in there. They're not the same size, but they're, except they're about small enough to fit in there. You'll see how this sort of mixed metals of warm copper and cool silver gold kind of work together. This is much grayer than I was thinking it is, but I don't necessarily mind that. So yeah, some of the things from Victoria Beckham that I would love to pick up are her uh, lid lusters, the ones that come in the pot. Now I don't use really potted shadows that much, but you know, I'd like to pick up like one called Mirror, and I think there's one called Midnight. One is a silver, one's a blue. Those are pretty obvious colors. I know everyone's been sort of raving about the new one called Velvet and how it kind of has a, like a newer formula. Um, so I really want to try those at some point. Um, I kind of want to wait till there's a sale or something at Bergdorf Goodman or on the Victoria Beckham site. Those are the only two places I know where to easily get them because I just don't need to pay 30 some dollars for a potted shadow that I may or may not use at, at this point. But I also want to try their Satin Kajal liners and the Jewel liners. Those look so pretty. There's one called Copper, Cocoa, just like kind of really basic metallic and neutral shades. But I really just want to try the formula and see how they work and see how they work for the kind of looks that I like to do at this point. I'm just going to go into the matte black a little bit and see if I can deepen it up a little bit. So yeah, another brand that I also kind of want to try a little bit more of is Laura Mercier, which is kind of one of those brands that time forgot about, but I have been introducing myself slowly to their line. It's a very old school brand. I think one of my first purchases at Sephora, I got like a sample of their skin tint or primer, or I, I didn't know what the difference was and I didn't understand what it was supposed to do. Um, I just remember it's one of the very first makeup samples I ever got. Um, but I have been really intrigued by their blushes. So I really did enjoy the Rose Glow blush that I have been using all winter. Um, and I do want to try some of their foundations. They're kind of at the $50 price point, so kind of around the Rose Ink price point. Um, sort of mid-range, I guess, or a little bit higher. And I, I really want to get that um, Year of the Rabbit blush because I want to try the blush in Ginger. Um, but I love the packaging and I don't, I don't celebrate Lunar New Year, so I mean, it's not like I need to get, it would just be a fun thing to have that, you know, pretty red packaging and with the little rabbit emboss on it. And I would finally get to try Ginger as opposed to having, you know, 800 compacts of the same blush that you can't tell what the difference is. So 
I have not seen that go on sale yet in any place in the U.S., but hopefully at some point they will. I, I think Lunar New Year starts or ends on the 22nd and goes for a little bit. Um, so we'll see. I know the setting powder in the Lunar New Year packaging is already out on Sephora. So just I, I would I would really love to pick that up. There's a couple of things in my Sephora basket that I would love to pull the trigger on, but um, I'm just kind of waiting for a few more things to put in my cart before I do. I'm not too worried about this look today. Um, probably gonna go for a walk and then I'm gonna read and then I'm gonna take a shower and go to bed. Um, Chantecai, I see their new spring collection is coming out. It looks super beautiful. The packaging looks amazing. The thing about Chantecai is their packaging always looks amazing and the last couple of collections the actual products have kind of been a fail for a lot of people. So I'm not going to jump into like the blushes and the eyeshadows. I kind of want to try some of the lip cheeks. There are some that look really interesting to me. And then there's, you know, there's colors that they keep habitually bringing out in different types of packaging, um, different shades that have always existed in their line, but they just keep repackaging them. So I'm really interested to try the lip cheeks. They're very expensive. Um, and I have a lot of soft lip products like that. So... Um, it might take me a bit to get there, but I would love to try the lip cheeks at some point. Yeah, I think we're just going to do this kind of silver and gold coppery thing. I think this is fine. And on that note, I do want to try some of the Dior quints. Um, Dior came out with these beautiful metallic quints for holiday, and I was so, so tempted. I made my first Dior makeup purchase this year, at least that I remember, of the... Uh, the Dior Millefiore collection. I wanted the case and so I bought one of the Dior Lip Shines. I kind of passed on the pretty embossing and the metallic colors just because I feel like in my Lorac palettes and in my Viseart shadows I have those things but at some point I kind of would like to try at least one quint. I don't need to start collecting them all um, but something maybe with some pretty packaging and something that has a good formula that you know a YouTuber that I trust can review. Um, so yeah, I would love to try a little bit more of Dior. I find shopping on their site to be pretty nice. I haven't had any problems as of yet. I got um, a gift set for my sister that she loved and the holiday packaging was so beautiful. The Lunar New Year packaging is really beautiful. I'm not really crazy about the Mitza stuff just because I'm not a leopard print, animal print kind of person. Like, that just seems really dated to me. It's just the way I grew up. It's always just going to seem dated to me. So if you love animal print, good on you. I just, it's not for me. Um, but I heard that that rose powder that's in the cushion compact in that collection is really great. So hopefully they'll bring that back in like some different packaging. I go in with a couple of favorites for the year. This is the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. This is the first one that I picked up and it is almost gone. They raised the price on this. It was $65. It is now $70. I did just buy another one on the Chanel website because I really love it so much, but I'm going to mix it with the number seven Restore and Renew Multi-Action Serum Foundation with Sunscreen SPF 20. I just really enjoy mixing these together because I do have quite a few foundations that I would like to use up and I love the feel of this and I love the tint of this so putting them together is just really working out for me. No you do not need a $70 foundation or tint to mix with your $14 foundation. It's just where my life is right now so and I'm using the Rose Ink number no. 3 foundation brush. There are so many things that I want to use up in my collection at this point. Um, and I've been actually making pretty good progress on a lot of skincare and lip uh, care products. So um, I have a ton of ColourPop lippy scrubs. I finally used one up after about how many months? Um, I used up the lemon one. I just started the matcha one. I have another like pina colada one. So I have three lip scrubs, plus I have some lip scrubs that I've got like as gifts and samples. Um, I use a lip scrub, ooh, there it goes. I use a lip scrub every morning. Um, it's a sugar scrub. 
Um, and I feel like that's really helped um, my skin out or my, my lips out. Um, I used to, for a very long time, I would get cracks here and here just because I wasn't moisturizing and I never really understood why I would always get these cracks and it would dry up and I'd bleed and whatever. And I haven't had that since I've been doing lip oils and lip scrubs and all that thing. And the lip scrubs seem to get along really well with my lips. So, and I am wearing a lip oil right now from ColourPop. I have two of the Mandalorian ones. I have one from uh, Ulta. I have another one from the, one of their neon collections. So I've got three lip oils that I want to use up this year. Plus I have the Clarins one. Um, and at some point I'd kind of like to try the Sigma one. I just noticed that Sigma came to um, Saks, which is pretty cool. Hopefully their shipping is a little bit better. Um, Cause I was just talking about how I do like, a, I do like Sigma products, but they just take oh, so long to ship out. Um, and I do like supporting influencers by using their code, but sometimes it just, it just takes too long. Um, so I'm kind of happy that at some point I'll be able to try their lip oil. Not right now. I want to use up the ColourPop ones, the lippy scrubs, and I want to get started on my Clarins lip oil because it is really nice. Um, and I want to use that and try more of them at some point. Um, but those are things that I just kind of want to use up. I also have two of the e.l.f. Rider Dye Lip Balms. Now I've been using the PSL ones since this fall and I'm almost finished with it. They're the ones that come in the little tube with the screw cap. They're not the most user friendly. They're very thick. Um, I use them at night. Um, and the PSL one, the only problem with that is that it stains. So I get stains on like my bed sheets and stuff like big it's very orange it's very orange um, I love the smell of it though so I'm hoping to use that up and get started on the one in sugar cookie that I got from the elf calendar like a year or two ago <laughs> um, so I've got some nighttime lip balms that I hopefully can use up this year I'm trying to use the lip oils more during the day I have a ton of the e.l.f. Hydrating Core Lip Shines. I'm almost finished with the Tovlo Big Big Mood or Mood Mood something, the one they came out with like last January. Um, it smells amazing um, and it's just a really light, light tint with a little bit of shimmer in it. I just use it when my lipstick wears off at work after drinking and eating, I just throw that on. And I'm almost done with it and I still have a couple more of those that I'd like to use up. I don't like the smell that much of the regular ones because they smell more like, I don't know, watermelon. Um, the other one smells more like coconut or pina colada. But I definitely have enough lippies and oils and glosses and things that I don't need to keep buying new ones, even though I just did, but that was my, I couldn't, I needed, I, I just had to, I just had to, I don't want to talk about it. In with the Pure Lease BB Perfect Glow Concealer. I've been really enjoying this just because it's really nice and easy to use. Nice and creamy, not too heavy. And I do feel like this one is actually pretty hydrating on my under eyes, as opposed to quite a few of the ones that just dry so quickly and just kind of suck all the moisture out of your face. So I've kind of gone over what I want to try, what I want to use up. Um, something that I've been using less and less of this year, um, last year, are highlighters. Um, I still love highlighters. I love looking at highlighters. I love swatching highlighters. But I've gone more towards blush and glowy blushes than actual highlight on my cheekbones. Um, I don't, you know, for... Like special occasions and stuff I still want to use them I just um, at this point I've kind of gotten over my highlighter kick um, but I still have some favorites like my Berlin girl glow from Becca which we'll never see ever again and once it's gone it's gone but I have you know ones from Catrice I have ones from Benefit I have 
<sighs> just so many different brands and I'm not using them right now just because I don't feel like I need that highlight. I just want a glow on my cheeks and I don't want it to really stand out too much because um, that's just how I'm doing my makeup right now. So not that I'm never going to buy another highlighter. I just feel like I'm kind of set and I don't really need to. It, it's not something that really excites me anymore unless there's some amazing thing. I'm Like I've kind of been tempted a little bit by the Selena Gomez rare, rare beauty ones because I heard they're just shiny shiny and I just want to swatch them and look at them but I also just know I don't need that in my life because I have like the benefit cookie highlighter that I could use and I have you know different different kinds of tones and I have icy ones I have warm ones I have you know gold I have silver so I just don't need it um, so I'm gonna be concentrating on those less and less I am like I said I'm using way more blush so like the Laura Mercier blush um, the rose glow blush that I picked up a lot of my physicians formula blushes which I absolutely adore I adore the butter blushes and today I picked up the I didn't pick this up, but I've had this for a long time, but I remembered that I had the Jouer Rose Gold Blush Duo. If I can open it. And I haven't used this in a really long time, and I remembered that my Laura Mercier, like, they're, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty much in the same family. Um, like, especially this one. I just love these, and I want to use them again, because they're, like, this one's a little bit more matte, but it is, has a sheen to it, and this is the glow, like, the blush topper. So yeah, I just, I want to pull this out and use this a little more. I have so many beautiful blushes and I want to not exactly pan them, but use the ones I have. So I probably, other than trying to get some of these different like mattifying Laura Mercier blushes, I feel like I'm very set for blush at this point. So this is a problem when I do these kinds of really chatty videos is I forget to do my makeup steps. So this is the Kiko Blossoming Beauty Blooming Perfecting Powder. It's a white powder. And I'm gonna go in with the Clarins Wonder Perfect Mascara in 4D. Um, I really do like this and I actually looked up to see how much it is. I think it's like $29. I love the brush and it doesn't irritate my eyes. So I don't know, it could be a purchase for me at some point. But yeah, I'm gonna continue to use my Lorac palettes. Um, Palettes, palettes. <laughs> My fairy tale forest. I love this palette. I love the noir. If they come out with a new one, I know the Soleil exists. I don't really need it. I'm gonna continue to use my Vizzy Art shadows and just sort of customize my own little palettes. I really enjoy doing that. So I'm, other than maybe trying the Dior Quince at some point, maybe the Clay de Poe at some point. They're so expensive. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm just going to continue to use the eyeshadows that I have, which is kind of one of the reasons I've stopped being into a lot of indie palette releases, just because there's so many. There's so many different color stories. If they're not really customizable, you really have to have a look in mind. Um, and if you want to go bold, sometimes you got to go bold. And um, I just enjoy the versatility of these shadows, Busy Art and Lorac, so much. So I'm really going to stick with these if I can and just not necessarily jump around to different palette brands, which I did for a really long time, and I have so many different palette brands, plus I have so much ColourPop. <laughs> and I didn't, I don't think I bought any ColourPop this year, last year, 2020, whatever, 2022. I don't know that I bought any ColourPop in 2022. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a ton of the Nine Pan pal palettes over there that I just they're basic and they're easy, but I just don't use them. There's color and I can mix them and match them, but I just don't. Um, so yeah, buying, probably not buying any more ColourPop at this point, considering, like I said, I love the lip oils. Um, I like getting it from Ulta as opposed to ColourPop because also they take so long to ship. But yeah, just sticking with what I have for eyeshadow right now and using the the colors and the formulas that I love um, and being able to try new things being able to look at color stories that come out and being able to dupe them has been really fun for me so it's like oh I don't need to buy that Chanel eyeshadow palette I can just dupe those colors awesome okay uh, using the La Beige Water Fresh blush in light pink 
I this is the formula that really made me fall in love with Chanel again. Um, I'm using the little brush from the Water Fresh uh, Skin Tint, and I don't know why I keep putting this mirror away because I'm gonna need it. And I just really adore this formula. I think it's so pretty. And I, you know, I like, I do kind of wish at some point if they keep, if they continue with this formula, if they keep it for blush, that maybe they'll do some kind of like nice light highlighter. Now that I've laid down a sort of all my uh, liquidy stuff, I'm going to go into, once again, my Physician's Formula Bread and Butter Bronzer. I am hoping to not buy any more bronzers and just focus on finishing up the ones that I have. I have so many bronzers. I brought I bought the cheat day collection last year, which is four different colors of bronzer. Some are deeper than others. Um, so I'd love to use up some of those. I bought this one last year and I have almost completely used it up at this point because it is really, really light. Um, so it's really easy to use up. Hello. Um, but I still have my Anastasia one, which I do have pan in that one. I have quite a bit of pan in that one, um, but it's a little bit redder. So, you know, and I'm set for things like brows. I have tons of brow products and I've already pretty much found the brow products that I love. I'm set for eye primers. I've got a ton of eye primers. Some are too deep, some are too light, but I'm going to just go through them and use them up before I probably just go back to the ones that I prefer tons of face primers. I've got about five face primers sitting in my drawer there. Some are more jelly-like, some are more um, lotion-y-like, some are more just kind of like um, silicone-y. So I am set for primers. Um, and then lip pencils. I have a ton of lip pencils. I love the About Face lip pencils. I love my Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. I love to use them primarily with a gloss. Um, I don't wear a lip liner typically with a lipstick. Um, so I'm set for lip pencils. So those are things that I don't think I'm going to be focusing on too much unless like About Face has a sale or something and there's a color that I just really want. So those are the kind of things I'm going to be focusing on for makeup. Um, I also want to try some new perfumes. It looks like Replica is coming out with a new perfume called Date Night, which I am interested in. I'm also interested to see if they do any other releases this year. I love the Maison Margiela Replica releases. They are so fun and unique and I love the I love the aesthetic. Um, I'm also interested in trying more of the Chanel Lazo and Le Exclusives. So I recently made an order from Chanel with the skin tint one of the um, Rouge Allure lipsticks from last fall and one of the Lazo in Paris Deauville. So that'll be coming soon, hopefully. Um, I just really wanted to try some things and make a luxury purchase because uh, I love I love the, the gift wrapping from Chanel. It's so much fun. Like I keep the ribbons and the camellia flowers and all of that. Like they're all over my room, as you can see. I'm just going to not go too heavy into perfumes because I do have quite a few of them. Um, but I've been going through like some of my old, uh, like my number five old premier. I'm almost done with that. I've been going through a lot of my little travel sizes of replica pretty quickly. Um, and not buying a ton of them, but just trying like the travel sizes or the smaller sizes. And it's not very cheap to try perfume. Like it's expensive. I'm gonna go in with the Jouer Rose Gold Blush. This is the shimmery one. adds a really nice glow to the top of that Chanel one which is pretty just matte and it's got a little it's not it's not glittery at all it's got a bit of a sheen but it's not glittery so this adds just like a little bit of glow which I also love to do again with the Laura Mercier but on my nose and my chin and up here I've just been doing a little bit of color up here and here with sort of those more colorful, shimmery shades. It's 
sort of in lieu of highlighter. And then for skincare, I am leaning more towards some um, mid-range to more expensive skincare. I tried the Clay de Peau uh, Soft Cream Cleanser. Their cleansing oil is amazing. That's like turpentine for your skin. Whoa. Um, and then I just, it's very expensive though. So if I do, I'm, it's going to be very sparingly. Um, I always double cleanse. So I use an oil or um, a balm to clean my face of makeup first. And then I do a cleanser, um, like just a soapy cleanser. Um, I also want to try some more Ulla Henriksen. They recently, I recently tried a sample of the Dutopia 20% acid, and I don't use a lot of actives and acids in my routine. I'm pretty basic. I use, I use about four products in the morning and night, um, like a, uh, an oil, um, a eye cream, a face cream, and then um, like a lip something, like either a lip scrub or a lip balm. But I would love to try, I tried that Dutopia and it seemed to have a little bit of effect on some of my bumps and some of my like, um, like ingrown hairs and things that I tend to get on my face. So I want to try that in a full size, but it's very expensive and I've been waiting for something else from Sephora to show up that I want before I make that order. Yeah, maybe trying some more AHAs and acid type things just to see if it kind of helps to keep my face a little bit more um, smooth, um, which, you know, I, I can always use, but being very, very careful with it because my skin is so sensitive, which is why I do not use a lot of actives. I don't use retinols. I don't use high acid concentrates, but maybe I can sort of dip my toe into that and I'll still stick to things like my elf skincare it's very affordable it's never broken me out it's very reliable um, I use an elf uh, I use the elf um, hydrating whatever it is with the SPF in it every morning and I also use another SPF my La Roche Posay so just gonna continue to do the things that work for me with my skincare but maybe just dip my toes into a few different maybe more expensive or more mid-range brands because I still love my herbivore. I use that every night, the lapis oil and the um, aqua, aquamarine, I think it's aquamarine cream. Um, but I still do use an elf um, eye cream every night too. So, I mean, it's not all bougie around here. And again, I don't remember if this is actually dewy set or if this is something that I poured into this bottle. I can't remember, it's been so long. Now, washed my hands, gonna finish up with my Rouge Allure Velvet in Terre de Toile. This is the one that I picked up in Las Vegas last March. Really had a lot of fun on that trip. And this is a beautiful color that I just, it's deep, but it's not too deep, and it's got a little bit of sparkle in it, and I just need to use it more. Um, they recently came out with a new Rouge Allure Velvet line for spring, which looks really pretty, but very pink. So instead of one of those, I do love the formula, but instead of one of those, I picked up one of the um, one of the ones from the regular Allure line that's a little bit more sheeny, so I picked up Alter Ego, which is sort of a brownie nude shade. Not that I need any more brownie nudes. I've got those coming out the wazoo, but I love a brownie nude. As you can see. Yeah. Cute. So again, I'm not really going for any sort of unified color story right at the moment, and maybe I did not succeed with this look, but I feel like I'm using things that I really love in my collection, things that I can just play around and experiment with. It's a Sunday, I'm gonna go for a walk and people are gonna see me and I don't care. Um, I think I look good. <laughs> and I get to use favorites like this. Um, I love this color. So those are my thoughts on 2023 and what I'm going to do with my makeup, perfume, beauty routine. Um, it's going to take me five hours to edit this video down to like maybe 30 minutes. Who knows? I've been sitting here for way too long and I need to get up and move around. 
let me know what you're looking at for 2023. Let me know what brands you're eyeing. If you're making any changes to your routine, I would love to hear from you. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Any of those would be welcome and all of them would be appreciated. And I will see you in the next one, guys. Happy 2023.